Okay. Um, yo, I've been trying to get this, this interview on the books for a minute right now. You know, I'm excited to speak to this guy. I have danced to his music in a lot of clubs over the course of my life. Um, Atlanta Zone, the King of Crunk. Please welcome one part of the East Side Boys, my man Big Sam. Big Sam, what up? Man, y'all know what it is, man. It's your boy Big Sam, man, aka Gas Can Shout It, aka Bubba and Putting Son, man. You know what I'm saying? We just get down like that, man. What's going on, Sean? Um, yo, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Good to have you on the show, man. Yo, you, 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 gas can shorty. What, what yes, the sir. hell is in that right now? Oh, got to make sure ain't nobody around. You said what? Just a little, just a little drink. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! And you know something? Even before I get into it, where did that even come from? When did you decide, yo, I'm gonna start putting my drink in the gas can? Um. Uh, Funny story, man. Um, we was in uh Orlando. Was it Orlando? Yeah, Orlando. You know when they had uh the Black Beach weekend and stuff and MTV. Yep, yep. Yeah, so we was down there and we was on the tour bus coming in, sitting in the traffic, and I seen these guys walking down the street, drinking out the gas cans. I'm like, what the hell? Oh man, fuck. So I went and told everybody, I said, man, no, look, they're drinking out gas cans, man. So I hopped out the bus and ran to the 7-Eleven, got me a gas can, came back, filled it up. And then uh, Bo and John, they went and got one, came back. So that whole weekend, we was drinking out the gas cans, but they left there as they didn't want to do it. So I just kept it going, you know what I'm saying? Yo, so so literally, y'all was on the, the tour bus and people was walking down the street drinking out of a gas can. And you was like, oh, that's it. Yep, yep. And um, I bumped into them guys a couple of years later and stuff. They was like, Man, he's still drinking out the gas can. I'm like, man, hey, look, I tell everybody I ain't come up with it, but you know, I just took it and ran with it. Nah, that's dope. That's dope. I never even heard that story. I always wondered, yo, where did that come from? Because that's so damn creative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I appreciate them guys. <laughs> you said you appreciate them guys? I appreciate them guys. I, I was looking for my gimmick and uh, I found it. Yo, but I'm, I'm going to tell you something. That's some real talk right there, because a lot of people, you know, they, they just took credit for it. A lot of people would have been like, yo, I came up with this. I was sitting home one day and put my joint in the gas can, and that's just me. So for you to even get them credit, I'm sure they somewhere in Orlando, somewhere in Florida, like, yo, Sam is a real one. Yeah, I always give them credit, man. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, but since then, though, you know, I do got the originals and, you know what I'm saying, get them made every now and then, but I got some Man, I should have brought them. I should have. I should have brought them for the props. But I got some, some other cans I drink out of too, though. That I, I don't stepped it up. You know what I mean? Oh, so you just stepped it up. Yeah. All right. Um. And speaking of that, how, like, how much does that hold? That's like five gallons or something. Uh, it's actually a, what a, a gallon of gas. If I'm not mistaken, uh, shit, I don't I know, man. You get five gallons up in you there. Probably, you probably get a five in here, man. I ain't. I don't know. It'll tell you, but I don't. It got all the stuff wrote on it, so you can't tell. Just go uh, home. Just know I poured her. I tell you how much I don't pour in here before. Yeah, that's where um, I'm going. Okay, I poured a whole fifth of Hennessy in here with uh with the Crunk Energy drink and filled it up to about where the top of that east at. Yeah, so I guess you could say a five gallon and um. I didn't drink all of it. That's when I, I started pouring it out, pouring it in people's mouth, you know what I'm saying? You no, know, I had people riding the boat before it was called riding the boat. <laughs> driving the boat, I'm sorry. Before it was called driving the boat, you know what I mean? I, yeah, yeah. We was already doing that. We just pouring their mouth. Nah, that's dope. That's dope. And that's, that's one of them things everybody remember you for. Real talk. Yeah, yeah Yo, man. Me... You, know, you got to have a gimmick in this game, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, everybody don't know. They, everybody got a gimmick, whether you what are you um, trying to have one or not? It might be the way your uh, rhyme cadence is, you know what I'm saying? Or it may be your ad libs, you know? It may be your dress, your swag, you know what I'm saying? Everybody got to give me. Is, is that something you always was conscious of and aware of? Like, even when you came in the game, like, yo, I got to have something that's, that is signature me. Something that when people yeah. think of the East Side Boys, they think of Big Sam, they think this. Yeah, yeah, true, true, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I didn't want to do the pimp cup. Yeah, we had pimp cups and stuff. I'm like, 
that ain't my lane. That's more John lane. I need my own lane. You know what I'm saying? So this came about. Hey, I opened the lane up and ran down. Mm. You, you know, you didn't start off as a rapper originally. You started off as a DJ, correct? Oh, look who do they the homework. You've been doing your homework, eh? <laughs> yeah, man. I ain't not, you know what I'm saying? I, I started DJing back in 86. Yeah. So you started D, I mean, we we 50 years in the hip hop now. So yeah. you started DJing early on. Yeah, yes. Yeah. I um I used to stay in these apartments called Eastwick on Calendar Road, you know what I'm talking about? Everybody in, on the east side didn't know about that. So um the guys I stayed next to, this was during the breakdancing era. Mm -hmm. I had a little breakdancing crew. We was called the Ice Rockers. It was me and two of my friends, shout out to Toriano and David. Um and the guys next door, they was more into the real B-boy, they wild style. Like they had the whole thing. They had the graffiti. One of the brothers was a great graffiti artist. Uh, one of the brothers was a DJ. The only thing they was missing was a rapper. They didn't have a rapper, but they had all the break dancing. So I learned all that stuff from them. And I always wanted to get on um uh and name Ant DeVoe. I always wanted to get on Ant Turntables, but Ant wouldn't let me get on turntable, but they let me get in there and break dance, teach me moves and stuff and everything. But as I got older, my, my cousin started DJing. So he started letting me mess around a little bit. So after that, I told my dad, look, I want to DJ. So my dad actually took me to the pawn shop, got me some turntables. They were no 1200s. They weren't even realistic. They were just some turntables and a mixer. He just wanted to see what I was going to do. And man, when I tell you I, I did, I learned so much on them turntables that you would have thought I had some 1200s. I practice every day, morning, noon, night. Word. You know, I, I love I love hearing stories when, you know, kids go to their parents and their parents support them. You know, you, you I don't care who you are. You got to support your kids. Like kid, your kids might be into to, today. They might be in the sports. Tomorrow it might be DJing. But just your father going to that pawn shop buying you them two turntables, it, it took you around the world, essentially. It opened yeah, you yeah. up. I love when parents support their kids. Yeah, and the crazy part is my dad took me to the Fresh Fest, and this what really told myself, oh, I'm going to be a DJ. We went to the Fresh Fest at the Omni. It's called State Farm Arena now for all y'all, but it was called the Omni. And um, I remember Jam Master J. My, let me go back a little bit. My dad was the first one to teach me how to uh, spray paint my Stan Smith Adidas. To dye my Adidas, buy white, and then Yo, uh, how dye old was whatever color. Was, was your dad young? Did you have a young father? No, man. I, I was like, I was um, I was 14 at 13, maybe. I might have been 12, 13 at the time. But my dad, he was in his, I had to be in his 30s. You know what I'm saying? Probably early 30s or so. If I'm not mistaken, but um, he took me because he's um he's dye his um uh, his boots because he's been in the military, mm -hmm. so you know he's to put the stuff on his boots. So he taught me how to dye my uh, Stan Smiths. I had some I had some blue ones, some green ones, some yellow ones, you know. But um I remember me and him sitting on my granddaddy's porch, and he was teaching me how to dye, and we was going to the concert that night, and I wore him to the concert, and it was me and him, and I remember Jam Messenger Jay coming down. And the spaceship, DJ, run, 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 run. I was like, oh man, he just come down. And I remember how everybody was going crazy. And I looked at him again and said, hey, I'm going to be a DJ. That's what I want to do. I'm going to be a DJ. And I told him, I'm going to perform in the Omni. I told him that. I told him that at 13, I'm going to perform in the Omni. I did perform in the Omni, but we performed when it was Phillips Arena, same place. So that came true. Yeah. Did your father? Did he remember that you told him that? Yeah. 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 My, my dad just passed away uh, three years now. Three years ago now. Yeah. You know that guy. That had to be such a proud moment for your father. Like, imagine taking your thirteen-year-old son to a concert, yeah. and, and, and that little boy being so inspired. And especially back then, you talking Fresh Fest. That that was yeah. the first big rap tour, national rap tour. 
Yeah, um, Houdini, LL, all of them, right. man. And for him to see this thing come full circle, you tell you that, that one day I'm gonna perform in the Omni, and one day you actually do. He had to be so proud in, from the pit of his soul. Yeah, yeah. And, and the crazy part is I just hate that I couldn't take him when I did it because we was in New York. We was up, we was in New York, and um, that's when Jay-Z and R. Kelly was on tour, and then mm -hmm. they fell out, so it came, it became Jay-Z and Friends. Mm -hmm. So he was doing he was doing the show in Atlanta, and we in New York eating, and we get the call from the label, like, yo, Jay-Z wants y'all to come do the show in Atlanta. And they were like, he gonna send a private jet, pick y'all up. I was like, whoa, we like that. We left what we were doing. We already had our bags with us. We was going to the airport, but our plane didn't lead to later on that night though. So we mm -hmm. ran to the we ran to the clipboard and got on the plane. And when we got there, everybody had he had SUVs lined up. Everybody had an SUV from the artist, the manager, even the securities had SUVs. Everybody, I was like, God. God. And we pulled up, went out there and did our thing. And this was on the Best of Both Worlds tour? Yes, yes. And when they came to Atlanta, it was, he had everybody out there. JD, he, he had called, he had called in the cavalry. You understand me? Nah, that tour was crazy. That yeah. before, before it imploded. Um, yeah. Matter of fact, while you was on that tour, while, while you performed that night, did you get a chance to hang out with, with Robert Kelly? No, he went down. That's no, no. That's when um they had broke. They had split ways, and he was just doing the Jay Z and Friends tour. He kept the tour going. Got you. Okay, yeah, he so he kept this it going, happened. and he was going to different oh. cities and pulling people in and stuff. You know, yeah. I do remember that now, and I forgot because I remember the Madison Square Garden where it all just went crazy. It went haywire. Right. But I forgot he kept that tour going after, and he did Jay Z and Friends. So it makes sense. He come through Atlanta. He got everybody on that tour. Man, I'm talking about everybody. Who else? Everybody. Scrappy, Grandma was, was there. Trivia. Man, it was. Man, it was. That was one of the best shows. That was, for like that. That was the biggest stage I ever been on because he had the regular stage, but for some reason. He had a whole part that went all the way, like almost to the crowd that you can walk to. And I went, I ran on one side, you know, we used to run back and forth on the stage and I ran and went up on that one side and I looked back and I said, whoo, I'm going to be right here all night because I ain't running back over there. No, that's a stretch. Oh man, yo. Okay, so, so you know, I was going to ask you, when did you transition from being a DJ to being an MC? But before I even go there, you, 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 your partner in crime, Low Bowl. How did y'all yes, Oh, man, 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 we've been knowing each other since we were like five, six years old, played baseball together at Gresham Park. You know what I'm talking about? Um, it's, um, it's, we grew up in the same neighborhood. My grandmama stayed in the neighborhood that he, that his mom and them stayed in. And so, I was always over there. I uh, went to the same elementary school. It was an elementary school that was in the neighborhood called Canby Lane. Crazy story about that. I seen an interview with Jacquees, and Jacquees was talking about how he started with the singing at his elementary school. He said the elementary school was in his neighborhood. I said, I had an elementary school in my neighborhood called Canby Lane. He goes, and the school was called Canby Lane. I said, wow. Y'all went this? to the same elementary school as you? Yeah, and he went to my high school, Tiles High School. Ain't that something? Yeah, small. No, it was years later, but still, that's like wow. You know what I mean? Yeah, small work. But and it just show how much talent came out of Atlanta, man. Yeah, like, but me and Bo been knowing each other since five, six, grew up all through elementary, but then we split ways in high school. He went mm -hmm. to Columbia and Matt now playing football. I went to Tiles High School, but we were still kicking in and stuff, you know what I'm saying? You know, in the evening and stuff like that, but we really got tighter after high school because mm -hmm. he, um, he went to Alabama A&M for football, on the football scholarship for two years, and then he came home and I was DJing. I was still DJing, and um, DJing, I was writing too. See, that's how I started, I was writing. Um, I'm just gonna tell you a story, it's a good story. My mama house, the garage is where I was DJing at. You may come over there any day. It may be 20, 30 people just in the garage 
doing what we do, you know, smoking, drinking, playing cards, uh, playing the video game, tape more bowl. And I'm in that DJ and making tapes and stuff, you know, it's tape days, it ain't CD, making tapes, you know? And um, we do that to about four, five in the morning. Everybody leave, my mom them going to work, everybody don't left. I can't sleep, so I would write. I always wanted to be a comedian, so I would, I want, I would write, but I couldn't write the jokes. But I would write the music to make it funny. I would write lyrics, like funny lyrics. So mm-hmm. that's how I came up with "Who You With." Uh, Shout a freak a little some. A lot of this stuff, get crunk, a lot of stuff, man. Um, that I was just writing and jotting down, and just writing and writing and writing, never knowing it was gonna come to fruition. You know what I'm saying? It was back in like 93, 94, and I'm doing that, you know what I'm saying? I've been DJing since 86. So 93, 94, I'm just writing at night when everybody go, go home because I can't sleep. And I would just start writing, writing, and writing, not knowing I'm writing raps, really, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, it, and Bo come home, he go with me one time to help, uh, help me carry my records for a party one time. And he seen it, he said, I ain't going back to school. I ain't going back to school. I'm, 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 hey man, I'm gonna stay here. Whatever you need, I'm gonna stay here. And then he did go back, but I don't think about it. They, they, they told him one price, and then when we got down there, it was like double the price. He was like, mm-hmm. "Yep, that's my, that's my cue right there. I ain't going back. I'm, hey, I'm riding with you. Whatever you want to do." And that went on, and from there, uh, play a poncho. I know, I know you got these questions. I'm going to look forward for no, it, but no, it's, all, ahead, it's all in the same story, you know. Player Pancho is like our, our brother, you know what I'm saying? So Pancho, Player Pancho, if y'all don't know, that's um what's up, what's up, what's up, what's up, what's up, what's up, lady. You know what I'm saying? He was on So So Deaf. And I used to go to So So Deaf with Player Pancho a lot. Cause I always wanted to be on the street team for So So Deaf. So I was like, this is my way in. But as going up there, I got cool with Jermaine. I got cool with um, I got cool with um, Lil John, not knowing that this the Lil John or whatever. Because now I got a bad track. Now, while I was DJing, I had two of my partners shot the Bear and Jermaine. We had a group called the DUI Posse. We was the Cater Cartel, but then South Central Cartel came out first, so we changed our name to the DUI Posse. So, my dad came home one day. And this one, um, Escape came out. My dad and the two sisters from Escape worked together at the Florida County Sheriff Department. So they, my dad, you, you mean yeah, their, yeah, father, my, their father yeah. and your father worked together at the Sheriff Department? Yeah, yeah. I didn't know them. They didn't know me. You know what I'm saying? We know each other now, but um, they, my dad told they dad, look, my son, they rapping, DJing. So he gave my dad Lil John's car. They had Jonathan Smith on them. So, so dev logo, everything. So my dad brought it and said, hey, when y'all get ready, I'm going to take y'all there. So we, oh man, we got to get our songs. We got to get good. We got to get good. All of a sudden, that didn't happen. They went, they separate ways. And I started hanging with Pancho and Pancho taking me up so, so dev, not knowing when I'm meeting Lil John that this is the same guy who called I got Jonathan Smith. Not knowing that. So, Maybe two years go by, and and Pancho and John they come over my house. We were ready to go somewhere, so we met at my house, and I was in that DJ, and I said, "Hold on, I grabbed because I sat this card there. The card had been sitting in the same spot for like two years. I grabbed the card, all the dust that was around it. It was just a clear space when I grabbed the card. I say, hey, man, this your card?' And he says, "Yeah, where you get that from?" I said, "Man, my dad brought me this card back in '93, man." He said, when we get good, he was gonna bring us to you. Now you sitting in my you sitting right here in my garage. Ain't that something? Man, I said, it's, it's crazy. It's amazing. Yeah, it's crazy part. Now, after that, we went to the club. Right after that, that's what we were going to the gate, because Pancho was performing. We go to the gate. This is crazy. We go to the gate and they play mystical. Here I go. I wrote who you with to that. So when they come on, guys from the neighborhood, they there, they know about the chain and everything. So when they come on, we start singing it. Who you with? Who you with? Who you with? God damn, who you with? That's the original hook. Just imagine 10, 15 people in the corner doing this hook. 
John looks, he comes over to me and says, hey, whose song is that? I said, well, that's my song. He said, you want to do a record? I'm like, yeah, I want to do a record. You know, I wasn't striving to be a, a rapper or nothing like that. Still, say I ain't no rapper, but I can put some balls together for you, you know, and make a song. But um, he called me three days later with this beat. He was like, listen to it, we're going, hi, 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 ding, 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 ding. At first, I was like, what the hell is this? So he was like, do the hook. And I did the hook, and I was like, whoa. And then just did, we just started, I just did the whole song over the phone. And then about a day or two later, we was in the studio recording the song. And that thing you know, who you with was, was birth. And he, it was out doing his thing, and he called me and said, hey, they want us to do an album. You got some more songs? I was like, yeah, I got a notebook. Let's go. We went in the studio and recorded the songs that I had already did and stuff and came up with some, came up with, I came up with some new stuff while we was in there. You know what I'm saying? New hooks and verses and chants and all that type stuff. And that's how Lil John Eastside Boys was formed. Yo, that's a crazy story. Like, so it was Player Poncho who connected yeah. you with John. And just from stuff that you wrote in your mama's basement and your crew was chanting, this led to him being like, yo, I want to give you a, uh, do you want to write a, um, do you want to record a song? And you go from being a DJ to a rapper? Overnight. My whole thing was, and, and me and him talked one time, he was like, cause he DJ too at the same time, at that time too. Mm -hmm. He was DJing uh, reggae at uh, Phoenix Dance Club or something. So I go, uh, my thing was, I just want to make a record that I can play while I'm DJing that's mine, you know? And I was talking to him about that one day after we had did the music, and he was like, that's what I want to do. I just really want to make a record that I could play that was mine while I'm DJing. It's like, wow, we was on we was on the same page. It was just crazy. But I'm going to tell you something, Sam. I always say DJs make the best producers and they make the best artists and the reason being is because they spent the better part of their life in the clubs watching what makes people dance so they understand that nightlife they understand what it is in you know in terms of coming up with a dope hook in terms yeah. of coming up with things that are memorable in terms of making beats that that you know, people just really want to go crazy to between 1 a.m. and 3 a.m. in the morning. So yeah, it, it yeah, ain't no yeah. surprise that as both of y'all being DJs, y'all came up with so many club bangers. Um, right, right. I ain't so, think about it like that. Oh, yeah, I always say, th just think about sense. Dr. Dre to, 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 I don't know if Kanye was a, was, was a DJ, but, but so many, you know, um, Clark Kent to... Yeah. So many huge DJs, whether they started being producers or rappers, they made some of the biggest club tracks, biggest tracks that traveled the world ever. That's Man, you fact. Know what? You know, you know, it's funny you say Clark Kent because he DJ for uh, Diner Dane. Mm -hmm. Do you know who my my dad's favorite rapper and DJ was? Who? Diner Dane and DJ Clark Kent. Get out of here. I kid you not. That's how I know Clark Kent DJ for Dana Day. <laughs> my dad loved Dana Day. Yeah. So my thing was as a DJ, who was the DJ? My dad told me. Clark Kent. Yeah, my dad used to work the um what club? It was it was some, I think the Phoenix Dance Club they came to. No, 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 no. It was oh, I can't think of the name of the club, but it was some club that they came to and perform. And my dad was working doing the security for it. You know what I'm saying? He was working for Florida County Sheriff, so he was like one of the officers that was out there. And he was he heard Dana Dane ever since then. He was like, I love him. Oh, I love him. Yeah, yeah. My dad listened to Dana Dane, man. He liked Dana Dane and DJ Clark Kent. Oh. Yeah, that was like his favorite. Nah, I mean, um, you know, a shout to Clark Kent. You 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 can look you can look from the beginning of, of hip hop history, damn near. Some of the, I don't care if we talking about Dr. Dre, I don't care if we talking about uh, Kanye, like they all had turntables before yep. they made their first beat. 
Oh, um, okay. Um, Lil John, he worked at um So So Death. Yeah. Why? Why did y'all first album? Why did who you, who you with come out on the independent Mirror Image? Everybody asked that man. Um, I even asked John. I'm like, why we just don't you know sign with Jermaine? Because I'm looking at it like you the A and R. Exactly. Why wouldn't, why wouldn't he sign this? I'm like, this is come on now. That's automatic right there. He said, nah, I don't want to. Now, as we get into the story. You gonna you gonna see, you gonna see what I didn't see that I learned at the end. So I'm thinking, okay. So just putting that out there for the people. So I'm thinking, why not sign with So So Depth? That's automatic. You the A and R. You know what I'm saying? He gonna automatically say, yeah, I signed. Yeah, we can do that. That deal, no problem. But we went with Mirror Image, a local independent label. Local now. Now mind you. I didn't even know these people. John just said, hey, they want us to do an album. I didn't even know we was putting the record out on uh, Mirror Image. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I was young. I was like 22, 23. So I'm not knowing. I'm looking for him to guide because you you already in there. You 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 A&R, you, you, I'm looking at you. You know the ins and outs. So I'm looking for you to guide us in the best route or whatever. Not the best route for you, but the best route for the group or whatever. Mm -hmm. So putting that out there, just keep all that in mind. So who you with comes out. Oh yeah, we're going to the studio. I don't know who we're going to the studio with. I think we just maybe going to his house or something. I don't know. So we go to a, a studio studio. I'm like, whoa, I ain't never been to a real studio. Cool. So we had a studio studio. Just not mean these, I'm just not mean Carlos Glove. Just mean them. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, hey, what's up, y'all, what's up? Who, who, who's Carlos? Who's uh, Carlos? Carlos Just... Glover is the um, CEO of Mirror Image Records. Okay, go. Okay, good. Yeah, he's the CEO. And um, just meeting them. So we in there, we doing our thing. Nothing, I don't know nothing about no Mirror Image or nothing. I just know we recording this record. That's all I know. And crazy part about that, I met while we was recording the Who You With. I met um George Clinton. What the hell had George go, Clinton got to do with it? With, I had with to go pick George Clinton up, brother. The I George Clinton. To, yes. We in the studio. We was on the little break time. You know, they were mixing and doing whatever they're doing. And um Who Ace. It was I don't, I guess they still partners, but I know Carlos has still got mirror image, but it was Cool Ace and Carlos Glover. The uh, Lexus 300s had just came out, the bubble eye. Yep. I was like, man, I want to drive one of them. He had a green one. So I guess they were getting ready to do something with George Clinton later on. So they were, he was like, hey, man, somebody want to take me to go pick up George Clinton? And I'm like, hell yeah. I said, I ain't driving my car. I want to drive your car. He said, yeah, drive my car. I ain't got no license. Yeah, thank you. We're going to pick up. We run to another studio, pick up George Clinton. And, um, the female that was in the group, I can never think of her name. We picked them two up and we come back to the studio. And all of just kicking it, listen to the music. They like the who you with and everything. And now, mind you, I don't know about the mirror image yet. So the tape come out. We ain't got our faces on the tape. The tape come out. Who you with? Mirror image record. I asked John, said, who is that? Oh, that's Carlos and um, Cool H. And I'm like, oh, okay. All right, whatever. I ain't signed no paperwork or nothing. That, that's uh, where I was about to go. I was yeah. I was waiting to. Oh, it's coming. Oh, it's okay, coming. Go ahead. go ahead. It's coming. I ain't signed no paperwork or nothing. Just we going to the studio. Boom, studio. Okay, cool. Tape come out. Still ain't signed no paperwork or nothing. I don't, me, I'm not thinking. So I'm like, okay, cool. It, song out. Freak me come around. We passing out tapes. That's how it got so hot because it went to all these different places from Freaknik. So six months after that, it was hot. I remember um, I remember John said, hey, we're going to go to Grand Street. Like, man, on to the radio station. But I ain't never been to the radio station. Let go. We meet Grand Street. We in there. Greg on a commercial break. He listened to the record. The record probably about two minutes in. He go, I like it, but when y'all going to rap? So we had to explain to him, no, those chants, that's the rap. 
who you with, that's the hook. He was like, uh, he didn't get it yet. I don't know about that. All right, cool. So leave radio station. We still pumping, 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 pumping. We got shows going on here and now. And a few months later, Greg called, hey, I need that record. I need that record. I need that record. Yeah, Greg, the record again. We on the radio, record on fire. Boom, boom, boom. Still ain't signed no contract. Hey, man, they want us to do an album. All right, cool. I want to do an album. Out here got all this music I got. We recording, we recording, we recording, we recording. Still ain't signed no contract yet. But we recording, we recording, we doing shows, we doing shows. So we getting ready to do another album. And this one was on Itchy Barn Record. Oh, 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 uh, oh, oh, don't, don't, don't go so far. I, you're <laughs> telling me the album came out on Mirror Image. Actually, the full album came out. Yeah, Who You With Get Crunk, the album. And you never signed any contract. Yep. Okay, you 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 clearly wrote um who you with uh, who you with shorty freak a little something. Yeah, it's the crazy about the crazy thing about shorty freak a little something. Huh? I actually now that I know I know a little something. I actually wrote and produced shorty freak a little something. John just did the beat, but I told I told him how the beat go. So if I'm not if I'm not mistaken, that's being a producer. Yes. I have to tell you how the beat go, and you are doing it, you know. And and we had uh I had three verses already wrote. So John said, "Now nah, I'm gonna write my own verse." Cool. So I took the first verse off, and let him have you know whatever he gonna do on his. And I gave Bo the second verse, and I just took my name out of it. So he just said Lil Bo instead of Big Sam, and I kept the third verse and the hook. Jazzy Faye come in, he said, hey, I need you to uh, sing the hook for Jazzy Faye so he'll know how it go. So I actually referenced the hook for Jazzy Faye. So if I'm not mistaken, I'm co-producer on this record. Yes, yeah, that, that that's, I mean, th there are many people, whether it's, um, you know, Puff, you yeah. know, you don't, you don't play instruments, but exactly. he, he arrange it, he put it together, he tell it, I want this here, I want this. I want to use this sample and he get production credit for it. So, yeah. so yes, technically you should have been a producer. I, I guess where I'm just a little bit confused, how does an album drop? How does it go from a single to an album that had two hits on it at least? And there was never one contract signed. Like, is there any royalties I mean, that ever came back to you? Not, not from that album. Nope, no, nope, not from that album now. Cause um, all I did, I just got a little show money, you know what I'm saying? But no, nah, not from that album. I, John signed a contract with Mirror Image. We didn't sign a contract with Mirror Image. John signed a contract with Mirror Image. Okay, so, so stop there for, for a second. Cause I always wondered this as well. The, the group's name is Low John and Eastside Boys. Yes. Why is that? Was that, was that, was that intentional from day one? Was you, did y'all have equal um, billing in terms of it's 33%, 33%, 33%? Why, why, why was it Lil John and the East Side Boys, especially if you did so much of the writing yourself on these records? Well, I guess it's because me and both from the East Side and John from the uh, West Side from the Swats. Mm -hmm. And they just came to us one day and they was like, hey, before we did, they were like, hey man, what y'all gonna call y'all self? We were like, East Side Boy, man, you know what I'm saying? You know, we're from the East Side, East Side Boy, you know, boom. And he was like, it just came out, the John the East Side Boy. But every time we went somewhere, when we first came out, he used to irk John because they used to call us the East Side Boys. They never would say Lil John East Side Boy. They'd be like, yeah, we got the East Side Boys in the house. Woo, woo, woo. And he's like, and Lil John, and Lil John, and Lil John, you know, he used to do that like you, if you don't believe, you can go, uh, you can actually look up Arnell Star interview. <laughs> Arnell Star kept saying that stuff. And he was like, hey, and Lil John. He go, oh yeah, and Lil John. I'm like, you know, it was like, it was just East Side Boys, but we never thought about it like that. You know what I'm saying? I never thought, well, I never thought about it as, a separation. Mm -hmm. I thought about it as a unity. You know what I mean? Just thought about it as a unit. It was Lil John and 
we two guys that hang together with the Eastside Boys. We could have been Lil John, Bo, and Sam. You know? Okay, understood. So, I, again, I got to assume album come out. You Even if you got credit on the back of the album, yeah. you didn't you didn't get any monetary credit. It wasn't like royalty checks came to your house. It wasn't like uh, you was uh, listed with ASCAP or BMI at that time. Nope. I tell you what I did get though. Go ahead. You said, you said ASCAP BMI. I didn't. I didn't. I wasn't signed. I didn't know about no ASCAP BMIs. I ain't know nothing about that. You know. Um, I actually found out that once we got the uh, TBT. But let me go stay on the track. But um, I was getting a check like every other month type thing from um. What was it? It was from a, it was from one of the guys who owned the the owned BME with John, from mm -hmm. his publisher. It was from his publisher that he that I found out that he was paying me out of. He would give me like fifteen hundred dollars, like every other month type thing. Um, I can't even think of what the publishing was, but it was um he this guy named Rob McDowell. He would give me, he'll call me that lady. Yeah, I got check for you. You know what I'm saying? But I ain't signed no contracts or nothing. So which lets me know. That publishing that I was supposed to get from the album was going to you, or uh, going to y'all. Period, and y'all figure get him fifteen hundred every now and then. You know, he, he don't know no better to keep him close, keep him cool. So as things went on, that's when I started figuring out. Oh, okay, I've been missing out on a lot of stuff. Um, I've been basically like you said in the hood. I've been got. You know what I'm saying? I've been got. Really, I've really been got. So I didn't I didn't figure all that out until like it was it was back in 97, 98. You know what I mean? It was 97, 98. I ain't really figure all that stuff out till like 2003, 4, you know what I mean? Yeah, because by 2003, 4, y'all done had a couple of albums out. You had one album out on Mirror Image, then you go on over to to Ichiban. And you you got to put Still your hood. Still didn't sign no contract with Bond. Say say that one more time. Still didn't sign no contract with Ichiban. All it was we think hey, we're gonna do another album. Okay, we go in the studio. Matter of fact, we go in the studio to do the We Still Crunk album. We recorded that at Two Short House. The whole album for free. We record our whole album at Two Short House for free. We over there every day just about recording our album. And after we record the album. Hey, we got to deal with Ichiban. I was like, who is Ichiban? Then I thought about, oh, I remember Ichiban, Kilo, um, uh, Black Dave, and, and the organization. Oh, yeah, 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 I know. I'll, okay, yeah. I'm like, oh, all right, cool. Still ain't signed no contract with them, though. Okay. Oh, this John when signed say, contracts. When you say no contract was signed, I'm assuming you speaking for Lil Bo as well. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's exactly, exactly. Okay, so everything, so everything you hear me say, I'm speaking for Bo too. Okay. Now Bo don't know nothing about the music. You know what I'm saying? He ain't know nothing about the music. He, he played football, he knew sports. So he was looking for me to guide us through this. As I was looking for John to guide us through this. But he was guiding himself instead of the he was out for himself instead of the group. At no point, you know, I get it. You eating the, the first album come out. You got two hits on it. Y'all traveling, you're getting show money. I'm sure you a young man, you happy. Your partner, he's a football player. He's like, yo, I'm actually making money in the rap game. I'm good. But right. at no point, when you even when y'all went into that second album, whether it was your father, whether it was anybody like, yo, this don't feel right. Like, like we need to speak to John how how are we not signing a contract that like something's wrong about this? Yeah, the crazy part is um my dad came to me one day. He said, Hey, you need me to get you a lawyer or something? This was around about the second album. He was like, You need you you got a he was like, You got a lawyer? I was like, nah. Well, cause he had connections from the courthouse and stuff. He was like, Well, I know a lawyer, you know, you and I'm you know, I'm trying to. I'm trying to be grown. I'm like, man, I got this. I got this. We good. We good. I got this. He like, 
all right, okay, let me know, let me know, okay, all right, you know, so, you know, he was trying, but I'm trying to be like, oh, man, I got this, I got it, trying to figure it out as I go, you know, because I ain't thinking about none of that right now. At the time, I'm not thinking about that. Like I said, I'm young, and I'm I'm thinking, okay, this is how I go, this is how I go, but as I got older and deeper in the game, I realized, oh, that wasn't how it went in the beginning. Mm-hmm. That ain't mm-hmm. right, so guess what I'm about to do? I'm going to ride the wave on out because if I say something now, it can stop the momentum uh, and what's going on. So go on and ride these, this last contract out that you have signed, that you have signed or whatever. Go on and ride it out. Then you just got to go back and recoup for yourself. You know, because I figured out, I found out, yeah, you can do that. Now I found out a lot of people was, oh, yeah, yeah, they went back and got that. So Ride that on out. Then you're gonna come back and go get that. Okay, so so I asked you, was there anybody on your side or even yourself or a little Bo who was like, yo, something ain't right. We need to speak to John. John just signed two contracts, one with Mirror Image, the other one with Itchy Bond. Never yeah. once did he come to y'all and say, Look, we a group, y'all, y'all are putting in 50% of the work. I mean, y'all need to go get a lawyer or y'all can use my lawyer and we're going to sign together as a unit. He he never once came to y'all. And no, but I'm going finna, I'm finna, I'm finna, I'm to blow your mind, though. Uh-huh. Uh, this is where we messed up, too. We end up using the BME lawyer, Vince Phillips. We used him for, we used him for a few months and then I is, started, is I, I around, found out is, about, huh? Is this around the TBT deal? Uh, yeah, like, right, yeah. Because I'm trying yeah. to, I'm trying to, I'm yeah, trying to, the yeah. Because after, after Ichiban was TBT. Correct. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so, Vince so, Phillips, we, yeah. The first time that y'all used any lawyer, and then it just happened to be the BME lawyer, was which your, your third record deal, which was on TVT. And the crazy part about that now, we was doing uh, the Be A Be A video. Mm-hmm. And signed no contract yet with uh, TVT. Just all I know was, hey, hey we got to deal with TVT. I'm like, who is TVT? You know what I'm saying? He was like, I oh, imagine this independent label that, that works as a major out of New York. They got uh, Nine Inch Nails. i like, oh, I know about Nine Inch Nails. They be. They got a... Uh, uh, not about nature, they got these people. I'm like, oh, okay, all right. So we doing the, um, we go up to the office and everything. They fly us up there, we go to the office, meet with the people, we in the meeting, but we ain't got no talk. John doing all the talking and it's like, we can't get a word in edgewise. It's like, basically we just sitting there. And then all of a sudden we'll leave the bit room, they'll go off into small meetings everywhere else and just leave us in the bit room like, yeah, Y'all can chill out right here, you know, you know whatever, you know. Y'all can smoke if you want to, or whatever, or all the food, you know, stuff like that, trying to pacify, you know what I'm saying? When you think, when I think about it later, you know. So we doing the um, Be A Be A video. We shooting the video. We shooting the uh, first part of the video with China White because she had to go turn herself in uh, that next day. So mm-hmm. we're going to get her scenes out the way, and John was driving her down to New Orleans out, right after that. So she could turn herself in in the morning. Crazy part is we shot one scene. Now think about what I'm saying. We shot one scene, and he's uh we that's when in the water. We got this big uh Sean John uh jean outfit, you know, all that stuff with big back then. It's soaking yeah. wet, it's cold outside, and here comes Vince Phillips. Hey boys, hey, uh, need y'all come to the truck right quick. We go to the truck, he got the contracts. I right, got y'all contracts right here. And he got the little yellow tabs in there with sign here, you know, like he done went all through the thing, right? So we're like, okay, you the lawyer. We going down, he like, yeah, uh, no, this page right here saying, woo, 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 woo. you know, we listen to him, whatever, sign him, sign, sign. Boom, we're like, all right, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all can go back. We go back, shoot video. There's things, as, as I start learning more, I'm thinking like, oh, so they thing was, let them shoot a scene. And then have them sign the contract. Because if they if, if we have if we don't have them sign the contract, they might not shoot the scene. I'm just like, 
it was so much going on at, after the after the group broke up, my mind started thinking about stuff. I was like, wow, wow, man. I don't know why I didn't see that then. Because I was too hyped. I was too caught up in the limelight of, man, I'm doing music. Mm -hmm. I never thought I'd be doing music. I'm really doing music. This is crazy. Everything I was writing, the stuff I think about in my head that I hadn't wrote down and we started new, people like it. They really like it. Wow, man, this is crazy, man. And, and that's when I say about a few months later, we didn't have, we, we got rid of Vince. We got rid of Vince because I was talking with somebody and they was like, you know, that's a conflict of interest. And then I, they started start explaining it to me. I was like, wow, that do make sense. That do make sense. So we had, you know, we kind of just strayed our way from it because at the time we were dealing with him, John, he was John lawyer too at the same time at first. Mm -hmm. And then John left him. And that one made me think, man, why John leave? Y'all yeah. yeah, grew up together. That's kind of why I asked you the question I asked earlier when I'm like, you know, why was it, Lil John and the East Side Boys. Because even as the contracts are being signed, you got a lawyer, you saying this is John's lawyer. It was you like know? both, it was, it was, he became all our lawyers. He was John's lawyer at first, and then it was came to us like, won't y'all, it basically came to us like, man, won't y'all ask Vince to be our lawyer? Cool, why yeah. not? You know, we all kick it together. You know, he's a lawyer, entertainment lawyer. Why not? Hey. And then as we, all three of he all three are lawyers, John dropped him and went with the guy he got now, I guess, or whatever, but he dropped him. And I was like, nah, I wonder why, why John dropped him. All right, well, so we stayed with him a bit. But I will say, Vince was at the time where he was like, not fresh out of the, you know, the law school, but more of a, still you, a you was, yeah, yeah, still a rookie, you know what I mean? He a veteran now, don't get me wrong. He, yeah. he, he, he in there now. Yeah, but he, but he, but he, he, he made his bones on y'all. Like, so, right. Right. okay. Um, so I gotta ask, I understand for the first two albums, y'all did not even sign a contract. TVT, you signed the contract. Did you get an advance at least? We got an advance every album. This is what we got. We every album we got a thirty thousand dollar advance. Now we probably got another thirty when we turn the album in. But every time we turn the album in, I'm like, hey man, what uh, what the other thirty? This was John excuse. Oh man, we ate it up in the budget. And I would tell him, who ate it up in the budget? I hadn't used no budget. Oh man, you know. Oh man, going uh flying here and going there. No, 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 no. Eastside boys weren't doing it. You was doing that flying over here and flying there and, and going over here and, and studio time over here with this person, that person. He was using our budget for his personal game. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't using it for group. He was using it for, oh man, I'm, I'm going to book the studio time off our budget to do this Usher record. You know what I'm saying? Or uh, to do this record, this, that record, whatever, you know, and he was blowing the budget on, on one one album, he blew the budget on going to Miami and getting a, a rent a mansion out that was $10,000 a month. Talking about doing beats in. But guess what? Me and Bo didn't have a room in that mansion. Not even oh. a room. When we come, when we come down, they, he was down there for three months. Three months. They never come home. He was down there for three months. Me and Bo would come down like maybe two weekends out of the month or whatever type thing. And I figured that out. You just doing that to say, well, y'all came down there, you know, to try to make it be like, yeah, y'all came down there, man, you know, you, that, yeah, y'all was in that budget. No, that was you and them, the magicians that you had down there. And every time we came down there, y'all put us in a nice hotel with the suites and all that stuff. So it was like crazy. We didn't even stay at the house. We'll go to the house and it's almost like we had a curfew. Oh, I hey, y'all call about to come get y'all. We're like, all right. I mean, one night we left and we go back the next morning. Like, oh, but y'all had a party or something? What's going on? All these bottles of wine around here and stuff. Come to find out, they sent us home. Come around, Carrie was coming. 
So I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. I want to go backwards for a second, all right? Yeah. So just bear with me. You said y'all got $30,000 advance. Yeah, every every album we got thirty thousand dollars, man. We never got the back. I understand, I understand, but I, I just want to be I just want to be specific. Was the thirty thousand to split or did Sam no, no, get? No, 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 no. Sam got yeah. thirty. Bo got thirty. Yeah. John got thirty. I don't know what John got. I know I know I got thirty and Bo got thirty. Okay. I don't know what John got. Okay. We got we all got separate checks, so I don't know what he got. All right, so you 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 raise another point that that I I just gotta ask because uh what's um because I wasn't thinking I wasn't thinking nothing shady of that because um oh, I can't think of, I can't I cannot think of the uh, on a TVT name right now Steve Gottlieb yeah Steve Gottlieb Steve Gottlieb would come to Atlanta and they would call us over to the office hey Steve here want to holler at y'all and we'll go down here give us our check he open up the big checkbook. Here you go, Sam. Here you go, Bo. And that's how we get out. He gives our check just like that. It don't come. It didn't come in the mail. We had to go up to New York. He came to Atlanta every time and gave us our advance check for for the album. Okay, so again, you raise a point that I gotta ask a question about. John, as 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 much as he was blowing up at that time with the group. Lil John and the East Side Boys, mm -hmm. he was really blowing and becoming this super producer, producing for right. everybody. So I'm just a little confused, and maybe you can fill in the blanks for me. When you say we got our thirty thousand dollar advance, he go stay in a house in Miami, ten thousand dollars a month. Right. Was he was he using the recording budget for y'all? Yeah. Exclusively, no, for y'all exclusively, or is he down there making beats for everybody? Because you just said Mariah Carey came down. No, so, he's, so he's why would that budget. come out? Why would that come out of y'all budget? Is what I'm asking. That's the thing. He's using our budget for that. He's down there on Lil Jon Eastside Boys budget, but he's doing all this other stuff with that budget. You're down there, ten thousand dollars a month. Imagine for three months doing beats. You're doing beats for the album. That's what you're supposed to be doing. Doing beats for the album. This is for the Crunk Juice album, the last album. You're mm -hmm. doing beats for this album, but you're not. You're doing beats for the album and everybody else on our budget. On our budget. And he did that with every album when I when I think back. He did that with every album. Because I remember we was in the studio one time, and we used to go to the studio from 6 in the evening to 6 in the morning. 12 mm -hmm. hour block. And we would do that. But this one day we was in there from six o'clock. I mean, it was six o'clock, we ended up leaving by eight. Cause me and both said, well, oh, we got out early, man. You want to go to the gym club, get some chicken fingers? You know, cause they had the best chicken fingers. And that's what we did. We got chicken fingers and went home. So we was back home by nine, 10 o'clock. So come to find out, he stayed in the studio doing a song with, uh, Doing the song with um, it was a song with Ti, Killer Mike. All this on our budget though. You know what I mean? It's still on our budget. He wasn't using nobody's, but he was using our budget to for our stuff and other his outside stuff that he was doing. You know, I found all that out later. Damn, damn. Okay, so. What is the relationship like between y'all at this point? Because clearly y'all ain't staying at the hotel. I mean, at the, at the crib, the, the $10,000 a month mansion, y'all got to stay in the hotel, even though you was in a suite, but you're only there in Miami for a few days a month. He's down there for three straight months. Is there friction in the group? Um, are y'all talking at this point? Are y'all best friends? Like, what is the relationship like? I mean, at that time, we was, we was cool. You know, at that time, we, we were cool, you know what I'm saying? But like I said, still not, it's still not, it's still not coming in clear yet. Everything that come in clear to 2005 when we broke the group up, to me, it still wasn't coming in clear. You know, I'm still cool. 
Because I'm a type of person, if I say you're my brother, you're my brother, you know, and I'm going to ride that till the wheels fall off until you mess that up. But yeah, we all, man, put it like this. Every time we went down there, I can tell you right now, we went down there for the uh, BT How I'm Living. We did that down there. And um, and they were trying to, they were like, hey, man, one of y'all can use my room if y'all want to. And I'm like, nah, bro, I ain't doing that. <laughs> And no, nah, I I'm not acting like I stay here, which y'all know. I'm not doing that. I ain't fake like that. No, nah, we ain't doing that. And um MTV did something that we was down there doing and stuff like that. But it came, matter of fact, it came to me and Bo. They they came to me and Bo and said, hey, MTV wanna do MTV cribs on y'all. We like, bet, let's do it. So I'm at my house. I'm, I'm like, I'm finna get this set up. The guy that cut my grass, I'm telling him about it. He said, oh man. Let me know today. I'm going to come cut the grass. I'm going to have on a tuxedo with the penguins. Like, I'm going to make mine funny. I'm trying to be better than Red Man. I'm going to make mine funny, right? Mm -hmm. So they come back to us like, ah, oh, yeah, they, they ready to do it. They say they're going to get y'all a, a, a condo downtown where you and Bo going to be in the, you and Bo going to stay in the condo downtown. And we, me and Bo said, hold on, man, hold on. What we look like staying in a condo downtown together? Bo like, man, I'm married. I got kids. That man married. He got kids. What are y'all doing? They were like, no, we're going to like, bro, we don't want to do that. We don't do that fake stuff, man. Like, we don't want to do that. If y'all don't want to come to our house for real, then we don't want to do it. So we didn't do it. We didn't do it. Damn. But the crazy thing is that was the norm in the music industry at that time. Um, it wasn't just y'all. So but, much MTV cribs. Those was fake cribs. A lot of the fans. The thing, I don't see. We. With us, we don't kiss ass. We're not fake. That's the whole thing. We're not fake. And that's another thing about John. He had a lot of people around him that kiss his ass, a lot of yes men. We wouldn't know yes men with, like, I'll cuss him out. I'll tell him when he's he doing something wrong. I would cuss him out. I didn't care. You know, I, trust me, I didn't care. He know it. I would tell him how I felt. I didn't care. You know what I'm saying? You, you know, uh, stay, staying along the lines of business, um, Y'all had that crunk juice. Where, where did the idea for crunk juice come from? And was your was, was y'all part of that deal? Because I always remember crunk juice. It, it, it had John's face on it. Um, what, 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 were you part of it? What, is that a separate deal that was done? And and, and did y'all even help come up with the concept? Oh man, back at, just remember what I told you back with the record stuff. Just remember, hey. Man, we gotta deal with Mirror. Man, we gotta deal with Itchabun. We just gotta deal with TVT. Keep that in mind now. We on the bus. We on tour, you know, we doing our thing. And our DJ at the time was uh Lil Bo Cousin. Dirty Red. Shout out to Dirty Red, shout out to Sean. That was Bo Cousin. So we on the bus and um he got cool with the lady from we had did a show one time, a morning show. And um, they had Red Bull sponsored there, McDonald's sponsored there. And I remember he got cool with the um, marketing person from, the head marketing person from Red Bull. So as maybe a couple of months went by and he was like, hey, the lady from Red Bull want to give y'all a, a Red Bull deal. Like, oh, for real? And so we're sitting there like, yeah, okay, cool, cool. So I say, and I got, I have a security guard that was John, that was our security guard that became John's security guard in the middle of being our security guard that'll tell you that I'm telling y'all the truth. To this day, he would tell you. So I'm like, yo, yo, how about we do this? Now, remember, I already had this, but it didn't have the energy drink on it. All this was the same, the star, the crump, that was the same. Mm -hmm. That's how my can was. It was already with that. It just had energy drink. Now, I go, why we don't come up with our own energy drink and call it crunk? Everybody always asking, man, what's crunk juice? What's crunk juice? What y'all drink? What y'all drink? Let's call it crunk. Everybody like, yeah. Man, yeah, that'd be straight. That'd be straight. So we didn't entertain the Red Bull idea no more. I just remember we was on the bus one day. And John calling me up to the front. Hey, Sam, come in. I go up there. He say, hey, um, check this out. I got us a crunk deal. 
I said, he got us a crunk deal. Matter of fact, we was on the Great Goose tour when he told me, I got us a crunk deal. So he don't got with the people with Great Goose, the head people up there, and they don't came up with the with the deal or whatever. So he comes, he goes, yeah, man, um, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna get some can designs and this, that, the third. I'm like, okay. So he bring the cans on the bus one weekend. What you think about that? And it has this logo. Without the, it has this logo. I said, okay. Okay, who, all right. Who came up with that logo? Who came up with that logo? Crazy part about that. The guy that first did my gas cans came up with this logo. He asked, okay. what you want on there? I said, I want Crump, I want Eastside Boys, and I want Big Sam. And that's how my gas cans have been the whole time. But now uh, my man Chopper really made these now. And he made this from the beginning gas can I had. They just had this. And they had no energy drink or nothing on them. No. But, but I'm asking you that because I'm assuming you paid him for the logo, whether it was $10. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I, I just paid $100 for the gas can. Okay, so wouldn't you own the rights yeah. to that logo then? Yeah. Now, check this out now. He okay. comes one day and say, hey, taste this. I taste it. I like, oh. he's like, all right, we're gonna tweak it. We're gonna tweak it. And he's like, you're gonna put ashwagandha and this day. I'm like, I don't know what all this stuff is. Now, mind you, I'm thinking you doing, I'm thinking, okay, I gave you the, I gave the idea for the group. I don't know how to facilitate it. You know how to facilitate. It. So I'm thinking, okay, you facilitating this for all of us. We're on tour now. We're on tour. It ain't like we sitting at home and I'm telling you this and you no, we're on tour. He goes, brains well, like, oh, I like that one. So, okay, he like, bitch, that's what we're going to run with. So, okay, cool. Next thing I know, we're getting cases on the bus. Cool. Giving cake, you know, giving drinks out at the shows and stuff. Boom, 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 bet. We're taking pictures for Crunk. We're doing promo, everything for Crunk. We all, all us all in the Crunk can, throwing them up. Yeah, that. We're taking solo pictures for Crunk. Crunk done made us, um, Stickers to put on our cars to match our car colors and everything and every all this stuff, you know. But then when it comes time to hey, they're gonna have a cut a check, we're gonna sign a contract. What we're gonna do? John did all that. He signed the contracts, he did this, he did that. And then when I confronted him about it, he goes, Oh, oh, oh yeah, I'm I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get them to give y'all some money. Like you're gonna get them to give us some money. I say it's my idea. What are you talking about? How you gonna get them to give us some money when you signed the contract like it was your idea, but it was my idea for the whole group? I could have said bump it, just do it myself, but I'm not selfish like that. We're a group. If I could come up with an idea for us, I'm gonna come up with an idea for us. I'm not doing that. And it, and then and, and when I think about it, it was so many people telling me back then, hey man. You need to do your solo stuff. You need to do your solo stuff. It was so many people telling me that. You need to do your solo stuff. You need to get away from him and do your solo stuff. So many people. So he comes back. He goes, hey, yeah, they're going to give y'all, um, they're going to give y'all uh, 30000 I was like, they're going to give us 30000 And they was already, he, first he was like, hey, they're going to give y'all free crunk. Like, give us free crunk. And they were saying like, 10 cases to the house. I'm like, I should be getting this anyway. It was my ideal. I kept saying that to him. But I'm like, okay, he's scrambling. Like, he never saying, I know it's your idea. Or, uh, now nah, it was my idea. He just keeps scrambling. Now I call him like, hey, man, when they gonna cut a check? Oh, I'm gonna get them, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get them, send y'all some money. I'm like, yeah, all right. Then he called, they gonna send y'all 30,000. I'm like, 30,000? 30,000. I'm like, man, much as I've been promoting this crunk without it being crunk before, much as I've been promoting it after it was crunk, you tell me three years, two, three years later, they took my 30,000. I said, man, what up? And they sent the, they sent me a check for 30,000, right? I went and put it in my account. That man okay. called me back. Did, did, did the check come from? Came from crunk. Hear yeah. me did it come from John's company or did it come directly from Red Bull? No, 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 no. It came from John's company. It came from Crunk. This check came from Crunk. Crunk LLC. So Crunk LLC was John's company? 
No, no, no. It came from the crunk. He was part of that. He was part of the company. But the actual crunk, the people that did the crunk, uh -huh. they sent me a check. John was, John was a, a on, on, I guess you could say a partner or whatever. A partner or whatever. But at the end of the day, it was on paper, it's like John owned Crump. You know what I'm saying? That's on paper, it's like he owned Crump. But the check came from Crump. Whether John, whether it's John, whatever, it's came, it had Crump. It came from Crump. I put it in my account. He called me the next day saying, hey, uh, did you cash that check? And I put it in my account. Now I'm in my head like, here go this bullshit. He go, oh, no, no, it, that was 15000 for you and 15000 for both. I said, man, you got me fucked up. Ain't no goddamn way. I said, that's in my account. Ain't no goddamn way. Went, man, you got to get that out your account. You got to get out your account. Because I was like, man, what up? So I, I called the bank, got them take check out, whatever. We had to pay that little fee. Wow. And, um, yeah, and then that, uh, about a couple of days later, I got a check for 15000 I said, man, this is crazy, man. This, this, it's crazy. It, and you know, that's about the time everything started unraveling. People didn't know it was unraveling behind the scenes. Like we was never those people that be in the public life. Man, you got uh, it, we had a lot of stuff behind the scenes. You know, wow. Um it's crazy, man. Like being in it at the time. It didn't seem like that, but like I said, when the group broke up and I had time to reflect on everything, it's like, wow, I ain't see none of that. And that's crazy, man. So, so walk us through how and why did the group break up? Mm -hmm. Good story. The group broke up really, and I did the um just to clear up some. When we did the end, when we did the little documentary thing on the uh that Nas had, and we did, and they asked me the same question. I was trying to just be kind of political, correct? I ain't really want to tell what really happened, but the group broke up because of the the money. The money went right, and I started answering questions on that last album. As we did the last album, I started answering questions. Like really, before we did the last. Album, that's why if you listen to the last album, it's not really too many Lil John Eastside Boys records on there. There's a lot of feature records that he did with other people. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like him, R. Kelly had the song, and him, Luda, and Usher had the song, and, and just stuff like that. It, it wasn't your traditional Lil John Eastside Boys album. Mm -hmm. Because I started answering questions about my money. You know what I'm saying? I really went to I'm like, hey man, where my money at? Huh? Yeah, my money. I ain't got no money off all four albums we don't did, man. We did four albums on TVT, which means we did two more albums. I ain't got no money, no, no royalty, none of that from that. You know, and all, and when I really started seeing some money is when we got the TVT and I got my first uh, BMI check. I ain't know what the fuck that was. I ain't signed no BMI. I ain't signed nothing with BMI. I ain't know what that was. So they signed me up with BMI, which means I was getting checks, made some checks I was getting were like, I think the high check I got was like 24,000 or something. Cause I mean, being on the being on the road, my dad comes, hey, you got to check here. Cause we're going to my dad's house. You're like, mm -hmm. you got to check here. I'm like, I got to check there. Well, how much is it? And me and him got the same night. I'm like, whoa. I said, man, go cash it then, you know. I'm on the road, I got a pocket full of money and stuff. I'm like, yeah, go on and cash it then. I told him, you cash and get you 10 out of it. We're like, you sure? I'm like, yeah, go ahead, man. Don't worry about it. Go ahead. So come to find out, once the group broke up and now I got me a lawyer and stuff and going to get my money, that check was 24000 That means it really would have been like probably fifty. Which means somebody else was getting that money. Whoever signed my BMI up was getting the other half of that money. And all my percentages on BMI, oh, they so off. They so off. Matter of fact, Shot of Freakler song, that's why I, that's why I'm talking about Shot of Freakler song and the production and how everything. You know how much percentage I get out of Shot of Freakler song? How much? 13%. You only get 13% of, of Shorty Freakler song? Yep. 
Didn't it you write? Be, it actually, it might be smaller than that. I had to really look at it. It might be smaller than that. I wrote the song before I even met this guy. I told the guy where I got the beat from, and the beat go like this. Jazz and Faith comes in. I tell Jazz and Faith, I've seen the hook for Jazz and Faith. Jazz and Faith goes in there singing like I did it. And all he did was add his little ad libs on there. And I had two verses that I wrote on them. So, wow. so you see where the shady, you see that shady is in there. Okay, so again, you know, because you 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 didn't answer how, how did the group break up? Like was was there yeah, that's was how, that's what that's how we broke up. No, I no, was, no, no, no. Was, was there a moment where y'all had a meeting? What did did you just oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, this is it. Start answering about my money. We in we in LA. We was in LA. At the hotel we always stayed at, we had the bar. And I'm like, hey man, where my money at, man? Where my money? Where money? Money from these record sales, money from the uh, my royalties, money from my mechanicals. Where's all this stuff at? Because I start learning stuff. Mm -hmm. Start learning little stuff. And people start telling me stuff that I should have been getting, I should be getting, right? So I start asking these questions. So I start asking these questions, it was almost everybody attitude changed. Like everything wasn't the same no more when I started asking all these questions. Now it was like the attitudes and stuff changed, and everybody like like okay, okay, the get the the jig is up. He he figuring it out now. Uh oh, uh oh, cause we had two more options on uh TVT. You know what I'm saying? We could put two more albums out, but we didn't. And then um I remember one day one weekend we had a show, and just so happened this weekend was crazy, man. We had the show. And we went to this hotel, the Embassy Suites. And we never liked to stay at the Embassy Suites because for some reason, it's always some kind of family reunion, a bunch of kids, and they know who we are and they just keep knocking on our door and running, knocking on the door and running all night. So we like, nah, we ain't doing this. So we, um, at this time we had two managers. So John and uh, one of the managers went to go find somewhere else for us to stay. Now, mind you, it was daylight now. Now, I think we was in Texas, too. And they wouldn't go find us somewhere else to stay. So we stayed there at the hotel, me, Bo, and the other manager. We at the bar. We like, just call us when y'all find something. You know, we're going to have a few drinks or whatever. So we sitting there having drinks. and stuff. I'm like, hey, man. Hey, man, I'm almost two hours or something, man. I know they don't found something. Ain't nobody called you or nothing? So the manager's like, let me call. So he called. They're like, oh, yeah, man. We over here at this. They don't found some kind of. Uh, play some kind of thing look like look like apartments that they don't found. So like I, right. they don't got our rooms and everything, but ain't nobody called to say y'all come on over here. So we get over there. When we get over there, John like, hey, I gotta hurry up, man. We gotta go. We gotta go. Show no show. Get rid. We like hold on. I said hold on, man. We been sitting over there waiting on y'all to call us for about two hours. Now we get here. You had like we gotta hurry up and rush and rush and rush. We're like okay, all right. All right, something ain't right. So, matter of fact, Pitbull was, uh, was with us too. John Pitbull and the other uh, manager went to find this place. So, we're going to the show. I'm heated. I'm like, man, something ain't right. Something ain't right. So, we're going to the show. As we're going to the show, we walking in the back. we walking in the back of the um, the little arena or whatever. It was like a little small little arena type thing. we walking in the back. As we're walking in the back, the manager that was with us at the hotel goes, hey, come on, man. Y'all want to get something, get something to eat, something to drink or whatever? We're like, yeah, we're going to dress room. Cool, no problem. John, Pitbull, and the other manager keep walking another way. Like, man, where they going? And I said, oh, maybe they going to, you know what I'm saying, set the music up or something, whatever. All right, whatever. So we go in here. They got church of chicken laid out. Like, what, church of chicken? Woo, we're all finna eat. I'm finna eat fix or something to drink. All of a sudden, I hear the intro for the show. I said, what the fuck? I said, hey, man, that's the intro. And the other man's are like, yeah. I'm like, yeah? I said, bro, we were going on. Why would you bring us over here? I'm like, yeah, y'all on some other shit today. I don't know what it is. Y'all on some other shit. So we run to the stage. Me and Bo run to the stage. Man, when I tell you, when me and Bo hit that stage and that crowd went crazy, 
John turned around and gave me a look I never seen before in my goddamn life, man. That man turned around and looked at me like, what the fuck is y'all doing? The hell is y'all doing? Y'all ain't supposed to be here. He gave us that look. And man, when I tell you, when I seen that look, I went off, man. I'm talking about I was out there jumping for you. When you talking about crunk, well, I was so mad. I told security guard, I said, hey, it was like, it was three levels. I said, hey, how can I get to the top level? I want to go to the top level and I want to work my way back down to the stage. And I did. I took the microphone. I don't know if the mic was going, e -e -e. I don't know, even making noise. I don't know if they cut it off. I ain't care. I went to the top level. I walked around there. Anybody want to take a picture? I took pictures. Went to the second level, did the same thing. Went back down to the first level, did the same thing, and got back on stage and finished the show. And that man, that man didn't talk to me that night. He, I mean, he was so goddamn man. He didn't talk to me or nothing that night, and I didn't care. And we um, we got back to the little apartment things or whatever. And I already knew about the after party. I knew about the after party now. They were like, "Yeah, we finna go to the after party." Oh, nah, y'all ain't going. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go over there. Like what? Huh, okay, all right, that was up. So we fly home the next day. Get home. My dad went to the found out my dad was in the hospital. He had went to the hospital that um shared while we was in the show. And so, but then nobody know what was wrong with him or whatever. So I'm going to see him. As I'm on my way up there to see him that Sunday, straight from the airport, going to the um hospital. Going up there. Next thing I know, I get a call from a manager. He go, hey, y'all got a meeting. I said, a meeting? I said, we just got home, bro. What the meeting about? He was like, I don't know. So I was like, oh, it's probably about the um, anger management tour. Because we was going on the anger management tour, like, I think in a month. Maybe three weeks out, we was going on the anger management tour. The 50 Cent tour. And him and yep. them and all them, right? So... We already been knowing about this now. Let me lead up to this too. We already been knowing about the tour. John on the bus, just like with the crunk, showing the cans and doing all this. He on the bus with his laptop, like, hey man, y'all come here, look at the stage. He's showing how the stage gonna be. This is the stage right here. We're like, oh, that what's up? And it was like a big hat on the stage. Um, it was a gas can on the stage, and it was a big head of John on the stage with the dreads. Then the hat represented Bo, because Bo was known for his hats. So like, oh man, that's tight right there. Man, that's gonna be hard. Then he he hit a bunch of why did hit a little button and it and the object started moving. I like, whoa, man. He was like, oh, see, in the middle of the show, some part of the show, people gonna crawl in there and then it's gonna come to life and they're gonna start moving around. Your gas can gonna be moving, my head gonna be moving, both head gonna be moving. We like, boy, that's gonna be hard, man. That's gonna be hard. So fast forward to that Dallas show and all that went on and get home, we got a meeting. So I'm thinking that's what the meeting about. So I'm in the hospital with my dad. I'm like, hey, I tell my man, I said, you can't go for me, man. I'm up here at the hospital with my dad, man. He go, nah, man, I got to pick my son up. I'm like, oh, yeah, this is a real bull. Now I already know. You ain't had to pick your son up no time ever. Your son stay with her, his mom. You ain't never had to go pick him up from school, none of that, none of that. So I'm like, yeah, something ain't right. I'm like, all right. So I tell my dad, look, I'll be back. I got to go to this meeting, and I'll be back. I go down to, we had a meeting at a hotel in a conference center. I don't know how you got a conference center that quick. We just got home. Maybe you know somebody at the hotel. I don't know. So I meet at, the, go to the hotel. I'm sitting there. I've been there about 30 minutes. I'm like, man, they tripping, man. I need to go to the hospital. Man. I don't know what's going on my dad. So as I'm pulling out, I see them pulling in. I'm like, all right. So I turn back around, pull it back in. We go in the conference room. It's the other the manager I talked to, he's going to get his son. So it's the other manager. He and uh, John, Rob McDowell, Bo, and I think Vince was in there. I'm not sure, but I think Vince was in there. I could be wrong. But so we sitting there. John got a bag of McDonald's. He just came from McDonald's. He's sitting there, he pulled his McDonald's out. He eat. Mouthful of food. Oh, yeah, um, I'm going to break the group up. And I'm like, huh? I said, man, treat food up, man. I can't hear you. Treat food up. I heard what he said. But I'm like, you ain't finna be, you ain't just finna disrespect like that. Like, that's rude in the motherfucker, man. So I'm like, man, treat food up. What you say? Yeah, I'm going uh, to, I'm going 
we're gonna break the roof up. I'm like, hell, you said I was say you said it better when you had the food in your mouth. Now you got the food in your mouth, you sound scared. We're gonna break the group up. I like what you break group up for. For what? I just don't I don't, don't want to do the I don't want to do the music no more. I just want to produce. And I go, me and you talked about that. Cause we did talk about that a little while back. He said, you know what? I think I'll come to the time. I just want to produce. So we're gonna try to try to get y'all a solo album on TVT. Like that. And we had a meeting. We was in um LA one night, Bo didn't go. They called me from my room, come down to the bar. I'm like, what's up? Hey, they want to get, they want to do the East Side Boy deal. We talk TVT, they want to do the deal. I'm like, cool, man. Let's do it. They're like, but what you gonna do about Bo? I'm like, what you mean what I'm gonna do about Bo? Well, you know he don't write, he don't do nothing. I said, and just like Lil John East Side Boy, <laughs> I do all the right. So what's the difference? All right, we just want to know. Like, okay, I was like, that was just weird to me that you say that. Like, all right, but the deal never went through. So I was like, well, me and you talked about that. I figured really, after we did this anger management tour, that'll get everybody enough money to you know, be comfortable. You know what I'm saying? And you want to go do your producer, you do your producer. You know what I'm saying? Me and Bo can do, you know, finish doing whatever we gonna do or whatever. Oh yeah, thinking about that too. Y'all ain't going on the tour. Ho, 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 ho. That's right there. Hold on. So you tell it, y'all were scheduled to go out on that anger management tour. And in the middle of the meeting, you find out number one, the group is about to break up. But number two, we not even going out on the tour that we supposed to be going out on in a couple of weeks. Yeah, 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 that's true. That's how how that's much true. money was y'all scheduled to make on that tour? Yeah, that's another thing. I had already counted the money up, but you know, I hadn't spent it. I ain't spent it, but I had counted it up. We was already at this time, we was getting 50,000 a show. So each show, I would get 12, five, Bo get 12, five, John would get 12, five, and we'll get a um, management 12, five. We split everything equally between us. You know, mm-hmm. usually imagine we get 20, 10, 10%, 20%. Yep. We just did, I just split between us because when we came out, it was the time of when you doing, my, our man was on his cell phone so much that his bills, his cell phone bill was so high that we was helping him pay it too. You know what I mean? So we just figured, hey, just 25, 25, just split it all down the middle. That way they take care of your phone bill and boom. So, um, 12 five. So this thing, I said, so are we gonna be getting 50,000 on this show or what's going on? They like, oh no, it's gonna be more than that. We getting 50 for these arena show now. No, this is gonna be more. So I said, oh, cool. So I said, make a 12 five a show now. Take the 25 out, keep the 10. Not knowing how much the show really gonna be for, what I'm gonna be making. But I'm just saying, no, it's a 10 right now. So take that 25 out, just keep a 10. It's a 40 city show, man, 40 um, city show. So you just, you do the math 40 times 10,000. You do that math, you feel me? I counted 25, I sat over here. That's out of the way, that's just a whole 400,000 by itself. Not count what we was gonna make. You know what I'm saying? I hadn't, I didn't know what we was gonna make yet. They just said, yo, it's gonna be more than 50. We know we're gonna be more than 50. I'm like, oh, cool. So I just went for a 10. If I just got 10 a show, but I'm already getting 12 five, so I took 12 five away. I'm like, that's just, that's some extra stuff right here. These, you know what I'm saying? So I was like, man, 400, probably been looking at five, half a meal, you know what I'm saying, by the end of this show or whatever. And we're like, we're gonna get two buses. But I knew with doing this show, we're gonna have to pay set props. And I you know this stuff gonna have to be paid yeah, out of yeah. I do know that. That's why I said the 10 and just take the 25 away. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm like, ain't no telling with all this set prop stuff, I might end up making back making 12 or 5 a show or something. You know what I'm saying? But um, we was going to get, he was like, we get two tour buses. One bus going to have the, um, one bus, basically, basically one bus going to be his with the uh, studio in. Not mad at that. Man, we can work on the road. Other bus, me, me, me and Bo, whatever. So it's gonna be rap, bus is gonna be rap, everything. 
So he said he break it. Nah, we, we ain't going on the show. This thing. Now nah, y'all ain't going on the tour, but I'm going to give y'all 50000 a piece. Well, you going to give us 50000 a piece? What the hell? I said, man, at this time now, I'm just thinking about my dad now because I don't know what's going on. Is he, you know what I'm saying? And come to find out, his, that's when he had um his kidneys had it ruptured. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, man, I'm like, man, what up? I'm like, man, you brought me down here for this bullshit, man. I said, man, my dad in the hospital, we don't know he finna live or die, man. And you got me down with this bullshit. I'm like, man, what up? And I just got up and left. I left. I got I just got up and just walked the fuck out, went back to the hospital. My dad, like, you good? I said, I'm straight. I said the group broke up though. He said, huh? I said, yeah, don't worry about that. Don't even worry about it. So um, time went on, and I I remember I remember um, getting because I went to a lawyer, and they was like, well, I could put a cease and desist on the on the show. He can't perform. He wouldn't be able to go. But if he go you, you and do it, you'll stand a better chance of getting more money. And I was like, all right, whatever. So the show going on, I'm tracking the show. In my head, I'm like, I'm thinking about going to every city of my damn self and just pull up and go get mine. You know what I'm saying? That's how I'm thinking. I'm like, man, no, nah, because I know me, my attitude, I'd be in jail in every city, man. I ain't even gonna lie to you. So I, I said, it's coming to Atlanta. So the day before it came to Atlanta, I called John. Man, y'all been calling him here and now, he never answered. So I called him. I said, hey, the show coming to Atlanta tomorrow. Just want to let you know, me and the boys, we got the whole front row on the phone. It was on the answer machine. Man, that man called me back within one minute. Hey, 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 hey man, what's up with that? Hey, man, oh, 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 oh. stuttering and shit. I'm like, what's up, man? Hey, y'all, I'm going to call him, man, see if y'all want to come do the show. Like, yeah, we want to come do the show. Oh, I, I, oh, oh, oh. um. What 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 y'all need? Like, uh, we need our money. Nah, nah I'm gonna pay y'all ten thousand piece. Like, I right, uh, y'all need car? Like, yeah, yeah, we need car, sir. We drove, we got drove ourselves. Yeah, we need car, sir. How many y'all need? We need two. He need one. I need one. I right, okay, 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 okay. Man, we got to the show. I kid you not, Sean. Two buses, like he said. Got our faces all over that one. Both buses got our faces all over the motherfucker. Crazy part is, come to find out, he ended up taking Scrappy. I think he took Bo Hagen, I'm not sure. But I know he took Scrappy and Trivia. I know he did that. So you got rid of us, so you could take them for a little on that. Then we do the show. Man, when I tell you it was still daylight, it was still people walking in. I thought we was doing a rehearsal, man. That's how many people was not in there. I like, oh, this must be a little rehearsal thing. Oh, okay. All right, so we here, we gonna, we're doing the rehearsal, then we're gonna come back and we're gonna go and do the shit. I like, man, I'm, we doing what we performing. Every, it's so funny. I could tell who's supposed to be me. That's the funny part. I found out who was supposed to be me. Cause as I'm performing, doing my thing, I keep bumping into the same person. Like, why does this person keep being right here by me? And I thought about it. Oh, you're supposed to be me. Oh, okay. That's what that is. Oh, okay. All right. So we stand outside John Trail after that. Standing there. And um, uh, Buck, Young Buck walked by. Me and Young Buck, that's my dog. So they were Buck, 50, and M. You know, and G-Unit, all them. They come walking up, but Buck like, Sam, what's up, boy? Man, where you been, man? Boy, I've been looking for you. I said, hey, man, that's your butt, man. He called himself kicking us out, kicking us out up to before it even started. He like, what? Like, yeah. Now, John's standing right here. At, we had John Trey. John's standing in the doorway of his trailer. Bit they come. Boys, what's up? Man, where y'all been? So I'm like, oh, so you ain't even told them the story. For them to keep asking where we be. You ain't even told them the story. So he was like, i like, man, and John, man, he called himself kicking us, kicking us off too for you. We got stuck. They're like, what? I'm like, yeah. They're like, man. So we leave. 
we lead it, we end up leaving and stuff. And me and Bojo went somewhere and just chilled out all night, man. We kept them cars till the sun came up. Chilling that. We didn't even care. You know, this this is a it's a lot, bro. I know it's a lot, bro. It's a lot. And I and I just let you go. This is a lot to digest. And it's one of them cautionary tales yeah, in the music. Yeah. Like you hear about these type situations, but you you typically think about it, you know, some 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 dude sitting behind a desk, um, the the uh, old white man doing it to young, you know, right. hip hop talent. But y'all was friends. Y'all, y'all, y'all was was colleagues, peers. These is my boys. So even as I'm listening to this, I, I can't believe that you didn't. That this is the this is the way it ended. But even all through it, y'all not having your contract, all that stuff. I mean, it's just crazy to me. Damn. Yep. Yeah, I think we got the contract with TVT now. Like, oh, okay, that's what's up then. All right, but all them other labels, I was like, oh, I guess they don't, I don't know how that worked. You know what I'm saying? I never knew how none of it worked. I learned, I learned the hard way, put it like that. I learned how things work the hard way. You know what I'm saying? You know, Sam, I'm, 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 I'm blown away. I know even you telling this story, you got to be blown away. Every time um, I tell it, man, look, one thing about me, man, I'm telling y'all right now, y'all can Google any interview I ever do. You the only one ask, you the only one ask these questions, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of people don't ask these questions that you ask. A lot of people didn't even know I DJed or whatever. But still, if you go back and look at any interview I do, story hasn't changed, man. My story ain't changed. Even talking to you, they can listen to this interview and go back and listen to the old interviews, and they can take the new stuff that you've been answering and put that with it, you know what I'm saying? It, it's, the story never changed, you know, cause you can't change the truth. I tell no, everybody, you can't change the truth. You wait, change wait, a lot all day. At, where, where y'all at with John today? Uh, man, be honest with you, I ain't talked to John really since 05. Uh, where, really since oh, we did that, all, that you, show. You ain't talked to him in about 20 years? Yeah, since I did, since we did that show, I haven't talked to him, I, I would say, but it was that was 05 that tour happened. Oh six. Probably says 06 face to face or on the phone. Yeah. But I mean, I ain't gonna lie to you. I'm 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 all right, right. I'm cool right now. You know what I'm saying? I do shows which I don't care. But they keep calling asking us, hey, uh, you think the boys will do do some shows with John? And I imagine me like. Yeah, why you can't? He's like, man, them boys ain't thinking about that no more. They ain't thinking about that. But now they keep calling still. My man, the message we got now, he like, look, man, stop calling us about this shit, man. If y'all want to do the show, man, yeah, we'll do it. But stop asking if they, you think we'll do the show with John. Them boys don't care about that, man. They go, they boys don't care, but they gonna go get that money. They don't care. So y'all still go out. You, you and Bo still go out on the road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Me and Bo still doing show. Still doing them. Ain't stop. Still feeding the family, you feel me? At one time, I was going out by myself doing shows. Wow, my yeah, brother, this, this is heavy. Um, you know, wow. I mean, my whole thing is like I tell folks, man. It, if they had had us song before we got into the game, before I got into the game, oh, I'd have had a whole bunch of in like uh, every time, every us song I seen that was a group, and they broke up. I like the same story. It's the same oh, story. Oh, Sam, somebody want to be bigger. Somebody always want to be bigger than the group. Yo, damn, brother! Like this, this is it's heartbreaking to say the least. I can't believe y'all ain't spoken eighteen years. And the the real the real tragedy of this. It was so much good music that came out of this thing. Like y'all yeah. got bona fide classics. Y'all was part of a movement, that crunk movement. Y'all were the kings of it. Right, 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 right. 
I mean, do you ever just sit and say to yourself, like, yo, what a loss? Like, what and, and all this for money? It, it, you know, because that's that's the, it, what it feel like. This is it's I, I didn't want to split it three ways no more. That's what it was. That's that's exactly what it was, you know what I'm saying? Um whether it was that or not on his part, but it was, it was basically selfishness, you know what I'm saying? So um, yeah, that's what that's what it boiled down to the money. You know what I'm saying? But here, but if you ask him, he'll say, nah, the group broke up because I got bigger than them. No. I don't care. It's like it, to me, I, it don't matter who's bigger in the group. I don't care. Cause guess what? <laughs> We're doing the same show, getting the same paper. I don't care. It don't matter who's bigger or whatever. Cool. That's cool with me. Cause I like first of all, I like to go everywhere. You know what I'm saying? I don't need security when I go everywhere. He he's a, a need security type person. I be everywhere. I don't need no security. I'm I, hey man, I'm over here, I'm over there. You might see me at somebody's house party. And that was when we was heavy doing the music. I was like that. Even when we had security, I always used to lose my security. I always lose it. They, they would call, man, where you at? I'm like, I'm in my room. I'm at I'm knocking at your room though. No, nah, I ain't in that room. I changed my room and everything. I like that's my whole thing. If you're gonna be my security, you gotta be on point. And I just I just always lose my security. I ain't care. I'd be everywhere. Damn. So, I mean, looking back, if you had to give any young artists any advice, what what's the advice you give them? Because like I said, this is this is one of them cautionary tales. Yeah, well, this is what I, everybody asked that question. You know, of course they asked that question, but I always tell them my best advice I can give you is if you got, don't, first of all, don't listen to the, hey, I got us, man. I got us, man. Trust me, man. I got us. Don't listen to that. Uh, if you got a parent that want to be involved, let them be involved. Because I hate that I didn't let my dad get involved. He, he, Try to get involved early on, I, and I hate I didn't do that. Um, also, listen to it's it's little telltale signs. Just just listen. You got to listen to stuff because I remember we used to have this one guy. He was with the Ghost Town DJs. They had the My Boo record, mm -hmm. and every time we seen him, it went in Atlanta. Either we would see him in LA, here or there, you know. Whether it's some kind of big thing, we would always see him. He would always say to John, man, John, let me get the Eastside boys, man. You don't know what to do with him. He ain't doing nothing but messing no more. He'll say that in his face in front of us. And I'm like, why yeah, are you stupid? Because I'm like, well, you know how much money I got in this pocket? How much I got in this pocket? Man, you tripping. Go ahead on. But when the group broke up, you know, the first thing popped in my head, Mm. Yeah, man, let me get the Eastside boys, man. You ain't doing nothing messing them over. I was like, wow. That man said that every time we seen him. So listen for the signs. Look for the signs and get you a lawyer. If you don't trust that lawyer, should get a lawyer to get a lawyer for that lawyer, you know? Just make sure your paperwork is A1. Make sure it's A1. Speaking, speaking of getting a lawyer, have in the last 20 years. Have you have you gotten a lawyer so that you can at least get royalties off of yeah. that independent album, the, the Itcha Barn album, in in all four of your albums on TVT? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got I got a lawyer on it right now. Got a lawyer on it right now. Got a lawyer here, and he a big he he a bulldog too. You know what I'm saying? Matter of fact, the lawyer I got, he used to be a uh, he used to be an artist as well, and he got messed over. So his whole thing is to defend the artists that never got they just do, you know what I mean? That that he 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 defends artists like me that was that was messed over like that. Like that's that's what he do. You know, and you know I talked with him last time I talked to him, he said he said it was something that I already knew. He said, man, I've been in their books. Man, they books are piss poor. I said I knew that. I could have told you that. I said, because they ain't got their stuff together. And then they would never thought I would get a lawyer, first of all. They never, they were like, he can't get no lawyer. Just so happened, I stumbled across the right lawyer. You know what I'm saying? That shout out to my cousin Al. You know what I mean? He the one facilitated this. And hey, man, I went out to Vegas and meet with him, and we've been on the run. 
We've been on the run. He don't ask me what the least I take, what's the most I want, everything. We've been on the run, man. And he think he can go back 20 plus years ago and get you your royalty yeah. going that far back. Oh yeah. oh yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I oh, hate yeah. to hear stories like this. I, God, God knows I do. I hate to hear stories like this. Um, but one but, thing about it now, yeah. I never gave up, bro. I never gave up. My daughter asked me one day, one of my daughters asked me one day, she said, Dad, why you, why you just don't, why you don't, you don't ever feel like you want to stop doing the music? And I tell her, no, because I feel like I never got my just due and I still got it in me. I said, as long as it's in me, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going. I said, if you ever, if you stop doing your dream, it'll never come true. I said, so I'm going to keep going on my dream. I'm going to keep my dream going, keep it going and going. And guess what? I'm gonna get my just do. I'm gonna get what I'm. I'm gonna get what I'm owed. You just gotta stick with it. A lot of people don't do that. A lot of people go, man, whatever it is, what it is. No, I never did that. I never did that. I kept pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, brother, I'm gonna tell you, Sam. I, 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 I was looking forward to this interview. I really, I really was. Um, like I said, I, I came up on y'all music. I got fond memories of, of fond, happy memories, like really, really great memories. And to hear the, the, the backstory, yeah. um, hear what y'all went through and what was going on on the other side of it, man, it breaks my heart, you know, because truth be told, making hits, you know, get low. Um, so y'all had so many huge records me and Yin Yang wrote Get Low. Yeah, it didn't need to be like this. It didn't. Nope. It really I didn't. It it's it's called selfishness, man. It's, it's, it's selfishness now. That's what it is. Yep. Wow. And it's crazy because all y'all still stay in Atlanta. You just never drove to the mall or just happened to be out somewhere and John just happened to be there and y'all have a heart to heart, a one to one, like, yo, how could you do us like this? Look, man, like I told you, I be out, he don't be out. I be out, he don't, he don't be out. I'm always out. Whether I'm by myself, with my kids, my family, whatever, I'm always out, man, I'm everywhere. He don't, he don't, he don't be out. Well, you gotta think, at one time he was staying in LA too, you know? He had, uh, when he brought the group up, this is crazy, bro. he brought the group up and he moved to this one neighborhood and just so happened, I had a buddy that stayed over there. He didn't know that. Why he ended up moving across the street from my buddy? Wow. And I had called him, he I was like, I was like hey, I know where you stay, you stay right across the street from my partner, man. I know exactly where you stay. You got the such and such in the yard and the blah, 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 you know what I'm saying? After that, it probably about a couple months later, my boss said, hey, your boss, he just moved. Your boss moving, man. He got to move the truck out there. He moved. I was like, wow, ain't that something? Hmm. I mean, so, so let me ask you before I let you up out of here. Mm -hmm. I get monetarily, you didn't get what you, you know about, got what y'all deserve. Right. Um, how, how 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 do you process this? What do your memories look like? Are, 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 are you, when you look back over your career, are you sad? Are you happy? Do, do, do you feel as though, yo, you know what? As great as an impact as we made in hip hop, and this is 50 years of hip hop this year we're celebrating, and y'all are, are a big part of that. Right. You know, my heart hurts. I, I I can't enjoy it the way I should. Like, what, 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 how do you look at it? Well, I mean, don't get don't don't get me wrong. Yeah, it, it was it was sad at first. Like, man, it messed up, man. I know we because I know we had so much more to give as a group. You know, what I'm saying? I know we had so much more to give. Um, and um, and uh, look look quick little story too about the uh, Front Juice album too. While we was uh, writing it, recording it, I told John, I said, "Hey man, he we was in uh, 
Disco Rich Studio in Miami. And he had the A room and the B room booked out. But he was in the A room making the beats. I was in the B room writing. So as he making beats, he's sending them over there and I'm I'm writing to the beats. And as I'm writing to the beats, I started hearing, I wasn't hearing chants no more. I was hearing the chants in like a rap style. Like, but I couldn't, I couldn't get it figured out in my head. Kept trying to get it figured out in my head, but I couldn't. But that's what I was hearing. And I went in the room and told Jones, hey man, I don't hear no more chants. I'm hearing like a, a rap style chant. Like it's almost a chant, but it's more of a, a more like a rap cadence chant or whatever stuff. He was like, nah, man, now nah, the chance, man, we need the chance, we need the chance, we need the chance. And I, I am just telling you what I ain't hearing. So years later, who would come out? And when I heard this song, when I first heard, oh, let's do it. <laughs> Man, that's what I was hearing back then, but I couldn't get it figured out in my head. I said, look at that now. And that, that man, that's some of the hottest stuff right now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I said, look at that, man. But yeah, man, I feel it was, I went through emotion. It was sad. You know what I'm saying? It was sad because I was like, wow, man, shit. They had to think about it. That I got money saved up, though. You know, I take care of my family, shoot. You know what I'm saying? And the BMI checks, they good. Take care of the family. You know what I'm saying? And um, residuals that I get from the uh, soul plane and you know, all these residuals from these movies and TV shows, mm -hmm. they'll take care of the family because they keep coming. So then it got to a point where it was like, you know what, man? If I died today, I could say I actually got a chance to do what I dreamed of doing mm. and make money from it and make an impact at what I dreamed of doing. You know what I'm saying? So I, I look at it like that now, you know, like the, for the question everybody like to ask, for John go, it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? If he can't, if he wasn't, if I was seeing him today, I wouldn't be hey, jacking him up. Like, what's up, man? You good? Man, how everybody doing? You know, like that, you know? I'm, I'm at that point now, you know what I'm saying? I had a stroke two years ago and I'm just at a point now where it's like, you know what, man? At the end of the day, God gonna make sure I got, he gonna make sure I get what I'm supposed to get. You know what I mean? He ain't gonna let the devil win. That's why you gotta keep going and going. He ain't gonna let the devil win. And I ain't gonna let the devil win. So I, I keep doing the music. I got I got new music I'm about to drop this year. I'm, I'm thinking about just putting it out and just making it the album. That's how many. That's how many songs I actually got, and I could put I put a good thirteen song album together and still have some more songs left for a second album. So. Yeah, man. Um, you got a lot of creativity in you, brother. Um, I definitely think you should put it out. The I'm world, it out. yeah. The world need it. Just make sure make sure your business is right. I don't see that. That's the thing that business is good right now. You know what I mean? Everything, everything is in 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 alignment. So it's it's perfect, you know? It's perfect. Everything's in alignment. It's like it's nothing like when it first when I first started. Everything's in alignment. I know more now. Uh, I got a better team with me. And we all strive for the same thing. <laughs> to make me richer. There you go. <laughs> yeah, well, we I'm all strive for the same thing. I appreciate your time, Sam. I do. I do. Oh, man, you know, I appreciate it, man. Yeah, I appreciate your time. And um, I can't wait to get this out. You know, it's it's it, some of the story I knew, a lot of it I didn't. But um, I wish yeah. you know, I wish you the best and, and and I pray, man, that the best is yet to come for you. Hey man, them prayers I always I throw them prayers up every day, man. I throw them up every day, and guess what? Every day it get better and better and better and better. You know, yes, even you know. even when all that happened, every day got better and better and better and better when I think back on it, you know. Well, you want to know something? Um, the fact that you don't have no malice in your heart, the fact that if you saw John to this minute, you can ask him about his family, that that's peace. 
Yeah, you know. yeah, I got peace. I'm man, I'm, I'm so peaceful, man. I can ask about family. That's why they ask when we do shows. We're like, yeah, we'll do shows, you know. You know, it was at one point they were like, you think the boy do a show? Our management be like, oh yeah, they do a show, man. They ain't worry about that stuff. Yeah, they do a show. But he come to us and go, I know y'all want to kill him. Like, man, I want to bust him in the head, but I go do the show. I don't care. You know, that just back then. Now, man, I get on the tour bus with you and go do a tour. Because everybody wants to see the reunion tour. That's the whole thing. And yep. I know we do a reunion tour. Man, it's been talked about. John even talked about it. He even, he actually called himself, called our manager himself and was talking about it maybe three years ago. So it ain't off the table. Just let y'all know. Y'all might just get that reunion y'all want. I hope so. And this is the year for it. So I hope so. Yeah, yeah. Say so peace and blessings, my brother. Hey, man, I appreciate everything, man. You already know, man. You welcome in my house anytime, man. And that's likewise. I, I, I'd love to have you back on the show soon. Oh, part two gets better. <laughs> Bob, <Bob's up. laughs> All right, man. Be good. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love. Make every move a power move. And I'll catch you all on the next video.